All right, I want to start out here today reading a verse from Romans chapter 1, verse 25. It says here, Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Okay, that gives a warning that there would be people who would change the truth of God, the written words of God, they would change it and twist it and actually make it lie, make it contradict. Now, I'm going to show you today three times that the NIV has done this very thing. The NIV is a satanic counterfeit. It's not a real Bible. And I'm going to show you today that they have changed the King James Bible. They changed it and now made it lie. And I'm going to show you. People say, does the Bible contradict? Well, that depends on which one you're talking about. If you're talking about the real Bible, no. There are no contradictions in the King James Bible. If you're talking about the fake one like the NIV, then yes, there are contradictions in the NIV, and I'm going to prove it in this study. So we're going to start out first in John chapter 3, verse 16. I'm going to show you. Okay, we're going to start out with the King James Version. It says here, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Begotten, only begotten Son. That's what the King James Bible reads. Now we're going to go with the NIV. Let's see where are we at here. John 3, oops, down here. NIV, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Notice it says, it does not say only begotten, it says one and only Son. Now I'm going to show you why that's a contradiction. Next we're going to go to Luke 3, chapter 3. Here you see chapter 4. Luke 3, verse 38 says, Which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, Adam, which was the Son of God. Who was Adam's father? God. God had two sons. The one was created, Adam. The other is begotten, born of, derived from, whatever you want, however you want to define begotten. Jesus Christ is born of God. He is his son. Adam is of God. He is created by God. God is Adam's father. God had two sons. I'm going to show you the importance of that in just a minute here. But let's look at the NIV. Here we have the NIV reading. Excuse me. Focus here. There's chapter 4. And you see it says, the son of Enosh, I don't know why it doesn't say Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. So you see right there is a contradiction. John 3.16 in the NIV says, one and only son, but here you have another one. There are two sons of God, one created, one begotten. So the NIV has a contradiction there. And I'm going to show you. This is really going to blow some of your minds. Here we have, uh, let me zoom out here a little bit. The NIV, the making of a contemporary translation. The words of the actual lying devils themselves. And here you have chapter 11, the one and only son, it says there. And this guy goes into the thing of trying to get rid of the, the reading of monogenes and only begotten, in other words. And he goes into church fathers here in quotations. Here he quotes the Septuagint. Here he's quoting Tobit. Uh, he, he goes all over the place trying to prove that it should say uh, one and only and not only begotten. But look at what he says here in this paragraph. This is absolutely amazing. He says, contemporary Greek usage allows for monogenes to be understood more broadly as an adjective stressing quality rather than derivation or descent. So Jesus Christ 
is not descended from God. He just has some good qualities to him. Unbelievable. It, can you imagine writing that? So you can see that there's not only a contradiction between John 3.16 and Luke 3.38 in the NIV, but also there's an outright attack in the writings of the translators where they actually say that monogenes there, the only begotten, it's, not, it's more about quality rather than descent or derivation. In other words, Jesus, eh, you know, I, I can't really say that he's born of God, begotten of God. You know, and we're supposed to think that these people were saved. Just incredible. But I want to show you one other reason why this is so important to realize that there are two sons of God. I'm going to show you the importance of that. Okay, we're here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to jump down here to verse 45. It says, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. That's Adam. That's what you're reading there. The second man is the Lord from heaven. God had two sons. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, reference to Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, was made a quickening spirit. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh. Okay, but now look at this. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, Adam, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly, Jesus Christ. We will one day be conformed to his image. And this is being written, by the way, to saved people. This does not apply to you if you're lost. Okay? I believe one day you're going to bear the image of Satan if you are lost, because he's your father. But this is talking about the two sons of God. That's what this passage is about here in 1 Corinthians 15. There are two sons. That's very important. So you see the first real contradiction there in the NIV, how they cover up the fact that God had two sons. Jesus Christ was not the one and only Son. Okay, they lied. They changed the truth of God into a lie. Now we're going to move on to the next contradiction. This one is found in 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 19. Let me show you this one. Okay, here in verse 19 it says, And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan the son of Jerry Oregon, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of of Goliath the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. That's your King James Bible. Let me show you how the NIV puts it. Okay, verse 19. In another battle with the Philistines at Gob, Elhanan son of Jerry Orgum the Bethlehemite killed Goliath the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. So Elhanan killed Goliath in the NIV. Elhanan in the King James Bible killed the brother of Goliath. Now just to kind of clear things up here, um, I'm going to turn here to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 48. I'm going to read a couple verses here. And it came to pass when the Philistines arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Look at that. Ran toward the army. David hasted. That's a, a good soldier right there. Verse 49, And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, He fell upon, and he fell upon his face to the earth. I guess you could say that the... Uh, Goliath had a, the mark in his forehead, <laughs> received the mark in his forehead. I'm just being a little sarcastic there, a little joke. Uh, verse 50, So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith 
and when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Now, you know, I probably didn't need to go to this passage, but the point is, David killed Goliath, not Elhanan. Elhanan did not kill Goliath. But let me show you some other, another passage here where this same event is spoken of. We're going to go to 1 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 5. It says here, And there was war again with the Philistines, and Elhanan the son of Jer slew Lammi, the brother of Goliath the Gittite, whose spear staff was like a weaver's beam. Okay, Elhanan slew Lammi, the brother of Goliath the Gittite. He did not kill Goliath. But let me show you something that's kind of funny in the NIV. Here we have the NIV, 1 Samuel 20, verse 5. In another battle with the Philistines, Elhanan, son of Jer, killed Lammi, the brother of Goliath the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. So let me see if I got this straight. Here in the NIV, according to 2 Samuel 21, 19, Elhanan slew Goliath. But if you read the account of how Goliath was killed in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 48 through 51, it was David that killed Goliath. But then if you read 1 Chronicles 20, verse 5, it was Elhanan who killed the brother of Goliath. Uh, a little confused there. Okay, you see the NIV, they uh, weren't really all that great as scholars. Okay, they, they didn't really know the Bible like the King James translators knew it. And of course the King James translators also had the help of the Holy Spirit. Whereas the uh, NIV translators had the help of demon spirits. Which I'm going to prove to you by the way coming up here real soon. Uh, the next one of the next videos I have going but uh, you see another real contradiction there and all because the NIV translators didn't compare spiritual things with spiritual they didn't compare scripture with scripture if they had gone over here to 1st Chronicles chapter 20 they would have seen hey Elhanan killed the brother of Goliath but because the words there weren't you know in the Hebrew text or something like this then the King James translator said, well, they were smart enough to look and say, well, it was obviously Elhanan killed the brother of. It says it over there in 1 Chronicles chapter 20. So they put in the brother of. So there's no contradiction in the King James Bible. But because these guys left it out, they made a contradiction. They changed the truth of God into a lie. Again, it's right there. Let's go on to the next contradiction.